Welcome to this tutorial um, showing you how to create artwork in response to the artist Gordon Magnin. Um, in this video I'm going to be showing you three different techniques um, to explore different ways to respond to his work. Um, I have opened up a photograph and I have also for reference opened up a piece of Gordon's work and this is the first technique that we're going to try um, creating these concentric circles um, to produce this effect. Okay, so back to my piece. First thing I'm going to do is turn my piece black and white, image adjustments black and white, then click OK. And I'm also going to image adjustments brightness and contrast because I want to give my, piece, my photograph a little bit more contrast. Click OK. All right, now I go to the ellipse mask and mask off pressing shift so I get a perfect circle an area of my portrait okay and then I go to the arrow and I use the handle just to spin it a little bit and then I go to select modify contract and I'm this time I'm going to contract it by 70 pixels because that's what I need. And you can see that the selection contracts by a little bit and then you can spin that to the place that you're happy with. And then same again, select image contract, sorry, select modify contract, spin it a little bit. Select, Modify, Contract, spin it a bit more, select, Modify, Contract, and that 70 pixels is there every time, so you don't need to keep typing it in, which is good. Select, Modify, Contract, and you just keep doing it until you get to a point where you think your circle in the middle is small enough. I think this will do for my one. Okay, and then we grab the masking tool again and select another bit. And then to make the correct effect, we want to make sure we're overlapping the other circle so that they start to move as well. And it's exactly the same process Select, Modify, Contract. I'm going to keep it at 70 pixels and just keep spinning it. And you'll notice I've done this circle a little bit smaller. Um, exactly the same as in Magnin's work. And I think it looks a little bit more dynamic that way but you can experiment and play with putting circles wherever you like. And that is finished piece. So that's the first technique. And now we're going to respond to another of his techniques. And that is this technique here with this um, pattern. Okay, and I'm going to use this photo to do it. And as usual, image adjustments, black and white first. And I'm also going to load up a picture which is going to help me with this. That pattern reminded me very much of a fidget spinner. So I'm going to use this to help me. Um, going to get the magic wand tool. Then I'm going to select the background and then go to select and inverse. And that has just selected then the object, which I'm going to control C and then control V to drop it into my photo. I'm going to shrink it a bit. It's a bit big. Okay, put it into the first position that I want a shape to be in. Double click. And you know I like to work close up, so zoom in. It's going to help you see it as well. And what I need to do then is the same process. Select magic wand the rest. Select, inverse, 
so I've just selected the object. Then I need to um, make that layer invisible and go to my photo layer. So I've got the mask on the layer that I want it. And then I'm going to spin it with the arrow plus tool. Pressing shift obviously helps me to make sure that it goes round to the right shape. And you just nudge it into position. And then this is crucial. You then go to the mask and that allows you to move the mask. That's really important. Okay, you move it to a new position and then you go to the arrow tool, shift as you drag it round, move it into position, nudge it with the um, arrow keys on your keyboard until you're happy. And then again, go to the mask and that allows you to move the mask to another position and it's just about repeating the process over and over until you get what you want okay moving it into position don't sweat it you know it, it's okay to have it slightly off to have some edges showing it's all good okay Again, select the mask tool to be able to move the mask, drag the mask, and you can nudge the mask as well using the arrow keys, and then back to the arrow tool, spin it around, pressing shift, and nudging it. Now, as I said, you might, on purpose, want to just put it a little bit off um, to make it look a little bit more like Magnin's work. Okay, so if you just nudge it with the arrow key and then go mask and then back to the arrow key and then nudge it again the other way, when you move it, you'll be left with these kind of whitish edges and you're like, oh no, we've messed it up, but you haven't really. If you look at Magnin's work, let me take you back to his work, uh, you can see it's got these kind of white edges on it. So it's okay to have the white edges showing when you nudge it, if you don't actually get it perfectly in position. Okay, so same again. Arrow key, press shift, don't forget, otherwise it would be difficult to get it right to, the right to the right position. Nudge it into place. Click on the mask tool. If you want to do some of that nudging, you can. Okay, just to make it look more like Madman's work. And then move the mask. And I think this will be the last one I show you. I won't do the whole lot, because it's just repeating the same process over and over again until you've done the pattern that you want. Okay, so last one. There we go. Oh, there we go. Put it in place. And if I press Control and Zero, I can zoom out and you can see what I've done so far. So that is the second technique for resp responding to Magnin's work. Um, and now I'm going to show you the final technique, which is um, to create these triangles over a photograph. So third photograph, same as usual, image adjustments, black and white. Definitely going to be changing the brightness and contrast on this as well. Whip up the contrast and bring down the lightness, make it a bit more dramatic. And then um, this time we're going to be loading up a triangle. Make sure you Google for an equilateral triangle because you want all the sides to be the same. And the same as last time, select the background with the magic wand, select inverse so you've just got the triangle, and control C, control V that into your photograph. And this time we're going to make our triangle a little bit bigger, okay, because it's a bit small on this. Photo. Make sure you press shift so that 
triangle stays the same. Okay, and this time it's a little bit more tricky, but you want to select with the magic wand the background and then invert so you've just got the triangle, go back to the layer, and instead of like last time just moving it, we're going to control C, control V, so we've got the triangle on its own layer. And that means I can then move it around, press shift to spin it, and then place it anywhere you like. And then on this layer, you're going to magic wand around this triangle and select inverse, so you've got the triangle again. Go back to your background and using the mask tool, drag it to a new place and then control C, control V and that is going to paste in that bit onto a new layer, spin it and plop that wherever you want, put it over here. Okay, and then same again, magic wand tool around that, select, inverse, go back to your original layer, grab the mask tool to be able to move that triangle mask to a new place that you want to copy, and then control C, control V, and again, you grab the piece with the arrow tool, spin it round, pressing shift, and you can place that where you want it. And again, magic wand tool, select, inverse, go back to your original layer, move the mask to wherever you want, and control C, control V, and again, you can then spin that and put that wherever you want. Okay. And the idea is really just to keep repeating this process until you have covered as much area as you would like. And it's exactly the same process each time. Um, it takes a bit of time, but once you get into the groove of it, um, just repeating the same process over and over again, um, you get quicker at it. I'm just going to plop that there. I think this will be the last piece that I put in. I think that will do. And that is how to use this technique to create a piece of work that looks like this. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial showing you how to use three different techniques to respond to the work of Gordon Magnum.